Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review and today we're taking a look at the brand new Thousand Toys Hellboy figure and I'm very excited about this guy. This figure was first announced at last year's Comic Con and for me it was probably in the top five reveals of the whole convention. Dark Horse Comics had one on display at their booth and it looked very impressive in person so it's very cool to see that less than a year later here we are and we're already getting it in our hands. So I am very happy about that and I'm super excited to talk about this guy so let's get into it. The packaging is is very nice we have some Mike Mignola inspired artwork here that looks great I love that it has like all the dark colors and stuff and then on the side of the box you just have like the side of the logo you kind of just barely see it on the back we get a look at the figure itself and that all looks very nice on the top of the box it says Hellboy good stuff and then this is just a slip cover so you could take this off and then you are able to see the figure and it looks nice in there you can see some accessories it says Hellboy at the bottom it says 112 scale action figure here at the top. And on the side of the box, you have the BPRD logo. And then on the back, it says Hellboy. And then we have some information on some of the people that worked on the figure. So that is all very good stuff. Very cool looking collector friendly packaging. But let's get into the figure itself. Okay, so here's Hellboy right out of the box and my first impression of this figure is that it's very very comic book accurate And it looks very good I'd have to say that it's probably one of the most comic book accurate Hellboy figures that we've seen and Thousand Toys really did some innovative things when it comes to the way that they hid the joints and what they have going on with the torso here with this plastic overlay And they just did a lot of really cool things with this figure I do have a couple of gripes, but nothing major and we will talk about those in just a second here But let's get into it starting with the jacket that way I could remove it and and we can look at the body. The jacket is very well done. It does have a wire in there along both sides here. You've got a wire going down here and a wire right here so you could pose it and have it look like it's blowing in the wind or whatever you would like to do. And it also has a wire in the collar. So that's very cool too. And the jacket is just very well done. I love the stitching, the folds. Oh, I got one loose string there, but I'll chop that off. Nothing major. For the most part, all the stitching looks very nice. You have the BPRD logo right here on the side. That's very well done, very detailed. And yeah, I just love the way this jacket looks. It looks really nice. But one of the gripes that I have with, with the figure is how hard it is to get the jacket off. I, c I was not able to remove the right hand of doom from right here. I did see another review where somebody just pulled it off from right there, but I just couldn't do it. So the way that I was able to get the jacket off was just pull the arm out at the shoulder joint here. And that's really the easiest way for me anyways. But let's remove this jacket. And then you have to go ahead and put this ball joint back into the ball joint that's inside the torso there. And it's pretty easy, but sometimes these these overlay pieces kind of collide with each other and it makes it a little difficult. And yeah, I don't know what it is. I can't get that piece out. I tried and I tried. I felt like I was going to break it, so I stopped. And uh, yeah, so here we are. But anyways, I love what they did with the shoulders here. How cool is that that you don't see the shoulder joint? And this is a very soft piece of plastic, so it does not get in the way at all. So look at that. That is really cool. That's one of those things that I think is really innovative. So good stuff right there. And then for the torso, it is very bright red. The whole body is pretty bright red, but there is some nice shading and details there that you could see like in the muscles. It all looks good. I love the way that they did the shoulders. I mean, the shape of it, how they look kind of slouched, you know, he doesn't look like a big, broad, buff dude. He just looks like a tired, exhausted, shoulders down kind of thing. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's really cool. And then here you have the belt that has a lot of things going on. You have some pouches. You have the crucifix hanging on an actual little chain. You've got a horseshoe there. All kinds of good stuff going on there. A lot of nice detail too. And I know this looks like a random hole, but that's so that you could put his gun holster. The shorts are sculpted. They look very nice too. Another small gripe I have is that on the knee joint... When you bend the knee, you could see this smooth joint in there. I don't know why they didn't make that joint the same texture as the skin because the skin looks really good. I just wish they would have made that joint the same because when you bend his knee, it definitely stands out. But it's it's for sure better than the knee that they had on the prototype, so I'm not going to complain too much. And then the boot looks nice. His feet look very cool. You got the uh, <laughs> the little hoofs there going on. But yeah, it's a really good looking figure. Very, very comic book accurate. You've got the ponytail on the back. Let's look at the head. I don't think we looked at the head, really. But look at that. That looks cool. I love the yellow eyes. I love the facial hair. Really good stuff. Very reminiscent of Mike McNola's artwork. 
And one other small little gripe I have is that the horn pieces on the head keep falling out really easy. So something we got to be careful of. You got the ponytail in the back. Yeah, really good looking figure. And then we have the right hand of doom and I think it looks pretty good. I think the sculpt work is very nice. I like the little circles here on the knuckle that feels very comic book accurate. Where it gets a little crazy is on the fingers. It, they are fully articulated which is a pretty cool feature but I think they look a little funny. They kind of remind me of Legos or something. So the articulation is a little overboard but it is cool because then you could get them into any position you want and they're fully articulated. They move all around so they're really crazy. One thing I do not like about the fingers is that you could see the little metal pins right there. I don't like that at all. I wish they would have painted them red. But yeah, it is cool that you could fully articulate it. And look at his thumb. His thumb comes all the way in like that. So you could grip onto his thumb if you want, I guess. But yeah, that's that's crazy. That's a crazy amount of work that they put into the hand. So that is awesome. But I do wish that the fingers looked a little more like stone or like the rest of the hand does. Like I like the texture a lot on the rest of the hand and the forearm and even the knuckles. But I just wish it carried over a little bit better to the fingers. But I, I can understand that that's hard to do with this level of articulation. But I don't know, maybe this level of articulation on the fingers wasn't necessarily necessary, you know? I don't know. It's cool. I do like it. It's fun to play with, that's for sure. I think it just looks a little off. It clashes just a little bit between the fingers and the hands. So yeah, it's very, uh, very interesting stuff though. You could definitely use it to get some pretty cool poses out of it. But it kind of looks like he has some Transformers <laughs> growing out of his hands or something. But yeah, crazy stuff right there. Pretty interesting. For accessories, he comes with four hands, all for his left side. The first hand that we have is a fist. And then next up we have a open relaxed hand. And then we have another open hand that could probably be used for like dramatic type of poses. And then of course we have a trigger finger hand. And then you have the Good Samaritan that looks really good too. It's sculpted very nice. I feel like the handle should have had a little bit more detail to it or something else going on. But other than that, I feel like this is comic book accurate. And I do like the way it looks. And it does fit right into the pouch that pegs into the front of Hellboy's belt. And obviously he is able to hold on to the gun and he does have a very tight grip on it. So you don't have to worry about it falling out or anything. And he does come with two different heads. The first one is the one that we discussed a little bit earlier. It's just a grimace, yellow eyes, classic Hellboy. It looks great. And the second head is sculpted equally as good. It's very similar to the first one, except this time around Hellboy showing some teeth. And it looks very good, very comic book accurate. And one thing that's interesting about how they did things is that he only came with one set of shaved horns. So you do have to pull the shaved horns off of that first head to stick them onto the alternate head. But that worked out for me because... These horns fit very tightly into this head. I don't have to worry about them falling out like that other head. So now for some size comparisons, I have Hellboy next to the Mezco King Kong and the Thousand Toys Comic-Con exclusive Synthetic Human. Here he is next to the Marvel Legends Ebony Maw and the Marvel Legends Tiger Stripe Wolverine. Next we have him here with the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And then now here we have him with the Mezco 112 Collective Previews Exclusive Doctor Strange and the Mezco 112 Collective Blade. And I'm sure we could get some pretty cool shots out of the three of these guys hanging out together fighting monsters and stuff. And just because these are some of the only monsters I had in arm's reach, here he is with the Marvel Legends Werewolf by Night and the Marvel Legends Living Zombie. And next up here he is with the Marvel Legends Beast and the Mezco Movie Hellboy figure. And I really like the size of this new Hellboy figure. I like that he's not like a big huge monster. He's kind of big, he doesn't look small or anything, but he doesn't look oversized and I really like that about him. Okay, for the articulation, we have a bunch of stuff going on, so let's jump right into it. Starting with the head, it is able to move side to side. You have some really good tilt to it. You could go that way, that way, really good stuff there. He could look way up to right there. He could look down to... Oh, look at that. Damn, that's crazy. He could look down to right there. That's the first time I tried to move his... Uh... Damn, that's that's super crazy. It's it's really cool what they have going on with the torso here, but it's also scary because you can't see what's going on and there's no way to look at it, so you don't know don't know really what you're doing. But that's really cool that the uh, head can get so low. I wonder if it could go lower. How far should we try? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, look at that. I don't know. That's crazy. I like that a lot, but it's very uh, nerve wracking. So let's bring it back up. Damn, that was weird. Oh, that's cool. Man, that, that neck joint is really, really crazy. I like how you could get him standing straight up like that, too. That's that's cool. Anyways, okay, so back onto it here. The torso, I wonder how far we could bend the torso. Okay, so you could bend it pretty good, but then it starts to look unnatural. But, I mean, it's not, it doesn't look horrible. It still looks okay. You could probably manage to get some 
good pictures out of that somehow. I mean, if you needed him to bend down that low, maybe like dodging a swing or something. Yeah, maybe. Look at that. That's cool. But it does make the the chest muscles kind of flare out, I guess you could say. I don't know how to word it, but it makes it kind of stretch out. But that's weird. Yeah, that's cool. And this uh, overlay seems very durable. So you could keep messing with it. It doesn't feel like it's going to get damaged. Really good stuff. But yeah, that's crazy. But anyways, let's get back to this real quick. Let's see one more time what we could do there. So you could, you could, he does have an ab crunch that works pretty good. Oh, look at that. Weird. Yeah, this is a weird figure. <laughs> Crazy. Anyways, but when you do that, it does bring the plastic up in the back. You know, then you're, you, you got some like exposed things going on. So let's try to get him back to where he was. That was, that was pretty bizarre, man. This is the first time I'm trying to push it to the limit here, but... Yeah, that was that was cool. That's very interesting what they did there. So good stuff. And let's see if you could go side to side. Can't really go side to side. It looks like there's some movement in the the hip area that's allowing some side to side, but not too much. But you know, enough I'd say. And then okay, that's enough of his weird torso. Let's get to the shoulders here. For the shoulder joints, you are able to go all the way around. You could come out to the side. And then the little shoulder layer goes over this piece here. So that's good. And this is a loose piece, so it floats around. So you could pos position it wherever you need to. His arm could come out to the side, to right there. And there is no upper bicep swivel. Well, I mean, maybe you could call that an upper bicep swivel, but it not it's not like it takes the rest of the arm with it. But there is a swivel at the elbow. And you have a double jointed elbow that gets really good range there. Look at that. That's good. And then you have the same kind of problem as you do with the knee where the joint is smooth. I don't know why they didn't make it the same texture as the rest of the skin. But, you know, I mean, it. the, the more I mess with it, the less it bothers me. But you get some good range on the elbow there. Then for his hand, you have a swivel and a hinge. And then for the elbow on the side that has the right hand of Doom, has crazy articulation. Look at that. And it's because the... There's like a little piece here that, that goes in when you crunch it. Look at that. That's crazy. Really interesting stuff. Like I said, they did some innovative things with this figure. So it looks a little crazy right there. You know, got a lot going on. But, I mean, the, the right hand of Doom always has a lot going on. So I think it's okay that they they made all that craziness right in there, you know. The, hand, the design of the hand kind of distracts from any awkwardness that might be caused by the joints. Well, for me anyways. I mean, like, right there, that kind of looks crazy. But you can make it work, you know? Alright, now, for his legs, they could come all the way out to the side. Get a little hindered by the, by the belt. But it's still pretty good. You could come out to the front to right there. You could bring it back to right there. Then you have a upper thigh swivel, double jointed knee, a lower leg. Actually, you don't really have a lower leg swivel, but the boot piece does swivel. It's just not taking the leg with it. Very similar to the upper arm. So no lower leg swivel, but you do have a rocking ankle. His ankle comes all the way up to right there. There's actually a little channel that lets the ankle joint travel up that high. As you can see right there and he does have a a swivel there at the foot so you could get that going side to side then you have the rocking ankle so really good feet joint too and one thing I just discovered when I was messing with the tail is that the belt detaches it doesn't come all the way off it still stays attached in the front but uh, yeah I thought that was kind of strange you know I don't know why they would do that but okay whatever and they just plug right back in. They just have little pegs. And anyways, for the tail, it's just a little ball joint. You stick the tail on there, and then you get some articulation, but that's it. There's no bendy wire or anything in the tail, but I do like the way it looks. So I think it works, and it does help them stand. So I think I covered everything on the articulation on this uh, very bizarre 
figure. It's got some really good stuff. I was nervous about that torso, but that's really cool, the amount that it's able to bend. Okay, so overall, I love this figure. I think that Thousand Toys did something very innovative here, something very interesting and different than other companies are doing. I know that Storm Collectibles has something similar going on with their figures in the torso area. It's usually like a soft plastic overlay, but it has a cut in it, so you could see the joint. But that might be a good thing because then it kind of relieves some of the stress. And with something like Hellboy here, who knows how this is going to hold up you know i guess we're gonna have to see in a couple years after having them and messing with them for a little bit to see how well this torso piece holds up but from the feel of it it feels like it's gonna be all right so i'm very happy with what we have going on here it's very cool to see a company try something different than everybody else and i do have a couple of gripes with this figure but nothing that makes me dislike the figure in general i'm still not a huge fan of the way they did the fingers i do wish the fingers themselves looked a little bit more like the rest of the hand of doom but the more that i mess with it and look at it the less i'm bothered by it you know so i'm just it's kind of growing on me and aside from that i do wish that the arm was a little bit easier to remove um, it doesn't seem like the way i'm doing it is the way that it's supposed to be you shouldn't have to remove the whole arm to get the jacket off so i do wish there was an easier way to do that but other than those two small gripes there's nothing i mean there's nothing i dislike about this figure oh and the fact that the horns keep falling out of the the uh first head that i had on there but on the alternate head they stay in just fine so that fixes that but yeah overall man this figure is very impressive it's very fun to mess with them and discover all these points of articulation that are hidden by the overlays <laughs> it's a really fun uh, adventure you know and another gripe i have is not necessarily about the figure itself it's about the price i feel like a hundred dollars or you know over a hundred dollars for this figure is a little much this figure cost me about a hundred and ten dollars plus tax so that's kind of crazy i feel like it, it would have made more sense for it to be around eighty dollars you know like the same price as a mezco figure i understand that there's a lot of things going on here but $110 plus tax feels a little steep for me. I still bought it. I'm happy that I bought it, but I just feel like that's a little that's that's a little crazy, you know? That's that's a lot of money to spend on one action figure. So, I do wish it was a little less expensive. But anyways, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to let me know what you think of this Hellboy figure. And also, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Thank you very much. Peace.